Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our second webinar following the announcement of the employment law changes with the new Labour government. I'm Wendy McGarvey, Head of HR for TC Group and also Head of HR Client Advisory for London and the South. And with me is Bruce Keir, Head of HR Client Advisory for Midlands and North. Hi, everybody. So I'm just going to talk through what our agenda is for this webinar with you. We're going to talk through, give you a brief reminder of what the proposed changes are. Then we'll look at how can reviewing your current workforce help you? What can your business review at this stage? How to go about making those changes? And then lastly, how can TC Group support you? So just a reminder of what the changes are. Basically, the Labour government have announced that there will be significant employment law changes introduced. There's over 60 pledges that have been made. Now, at this stage, the full extent of them we are unaware of, and that's not been disclosed. But what we do know is that the majority of these pledges are going to strengthen employees' rights. There will be a mixture of changes some will be actually strengthening existing employee rights and some will be new pieces of legislation. So what do these key changes include? There will be a lot of new day one rights and that's something we want to talk through with you as part of this seminar today. Um, in particular, some changes um, that you can look at when reviewing your workforce because one of the big day one rights will be the unfair dismissal claim. Removal of the employee and work distinction, some changes to zero hour contracts, changes to sick pay, flexible working and minimum wage. So we've got a quick poll for you all, just so we can get an understanding from you of your, your business. Can you just answer how many employees do you have with less than two years service? nearly there great just got one or two more people to uh to do it and then we're good to go that's great thank you very much everybody And then one further poll is just so we can get an understanding of your views is, are you concerned about making these employee related changes after the legislation has been implemented? That's great. Thanks very much. We've just got a couple more to do. So just give it five, ten more seconds. Perfect. Thanks very much. Brilliant. OK, so how can reviewing your current workforce help you? So our view is that ideally you want to look at your workforce now to determine whether you're operating efficiently. We believe it will be much more difficult to make the changes post the legislation, so it's best to review your practices and operations now. Waiting to make these changes after the reforms have been introduced can increase the risk and the cost to you as a business, which is why our recommendation is for you to do some review of the workforce now and see if there are any changes you can make prior to the new legislation coming in. So what 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 can you change now? So what, what can your 
your business review at this stage. So, um, the, the, you know, the, the first one that, that sort of we've been speaking to clients about a lot, at, at, you know, at the moment is, is, is the employee structure. So it is a restructure required. Um, it may be that, that, that actually you, you, your, your structure is right for right now, but actually in the future, you may need to look at changing that. And, and what you might want to do is, is, is look to future proof right now. As, as Wendy said, we believe it's going to be a lot easier to make changes pre any of the legislation coming into place. So you might want to be looking at, you know, is your business able to scale up or down if required? Um, you know, talk through the, you know, you could look at the, the pros and cons of restructuring. So from a, a timing perspective, from how it will affects your workforce right now you know looking into sort of things like your employee engagement your retention um you know how will it how will a restructure affect that and you know maybe looking at it from a, a different perspective in terms of ensuring for, for your employees that are there and that are engaged they've got the right structure to be able to move the business forward and to grow um you, you know actually some of the the pros of restructuring which people don't sort of fully appreciate that it can come when you've got that engaged workforce. Um, you might want to be looking at your, your general terms and conditions of employment. A again, you know, talking through, um, you know, what's what's fit for your business? Um, how, how can you ensure that you are doing what's best for your employees? You're engaging them, you're, you're, you're ensuring that they're motivated. And that may mean that you want to look at things like your your sickness policies or your your uh, your maternity, paternity, or your, your absence and, uh, and, and annual leave policies. So all forming sort of part of that general terms and conditions of employment. And it, and it might be that actually, you know, again, you might not need to, 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 to specifically change them right now, but due to the ease of the or the, 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 the much easier consultation that you would need to go through at this stage with employees, it may be better to do that right now. Similarly, with with uh, employee related processes or, or, or any sort of training requirements that, that you may have. Um, you might want to ensure that, you know, actually putting in some, you know, making some slight changes to processes or ensuring that your managers are, are fully trained up and able to support your workforce once changes to legislation come into play. Doing that right now might be the best thing for you rather than waiting and then seeing what, what sort of uh, what, what comes out and, and, and then potentially having managers that aren't able to manage against the legislation, which, which does come into play. So, um, you, you know, there's lots that you can be, re you know, reviewing. And this isn't an, an exhaustive list, but this is just some of the things that, that some of the things that are top of mind and that we've been speaking to clients about. So in terms of actually making some of those changes, um, so, you know, most of the changes, if not all, and, you know, require some form of consultation and, 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 and clearly, you know, best practices to ensure that you are speaking to client, uh, speaking to, to employees, sorry, on a, on a regular basis and, and ensuring that they are fully aware of the changes that are coming into place from, from, uh, for, from, from the business perspective and um, ensuring that, that they are actually on board with them as well and they fully understand the reasons for those changes. So, as I said, it's best practice to do it with all, all, all pieces of, um, of changes that you want to, but actually there is a legal obligation to do it on some as well. Um, you may want to look at doing some benchmarking um, that, that that can enable you to ensure, you know, especially when you're looking at changes to terms and conditions, for example, um, that, that you're in the, the right area for you from a, from a market perspective, um, that, that, you know, you're, you're, you're against your competitors. It can really help, firstly, from a consultation perspective to show employees that you've thoroughly sort of done some, uh, you, you know, some some good due diligence around the changes that you're looking to do but also it can help things like your attraction and retention strategies because you're ensuring that that, that against your competitors and against the market you are you, you're, you're benchmarking all your terms and conditions appropriately um if any changes you're looking to to, to to make come into play after a period of consultation obviously you'll need to provide the employees with a period of notice so that will either be the the, the contractual notice or the statutory notice depending on the change that, that you're looking to make there may be some process changes for example where there's no notices required and you can you can implement them straight away but for the majority of changes certainly where it's to any changes of terms and conditions there will be a, a period of notice that's required and then finally, for for you know, ensuring that, that that these these any changes are sort of put into writing, are provided to the employees, and signed and returned. So it may be in some cases that you need a, a full new 
contract of employment that, that's drafted up um, and, and includes any new terms and conditions that are there. For some changes, you may just need a, a, a change to, to terms and conditions letter or and, and likewise with, with your handbooks or policies as well. It may just be some individual or slight changes within the policies. Some policies may need full full reviews and, uh, and, and, and reissuing. So we've talked through some of the changes that you may want to make, how you can make some of those changes. So now how we how can we support you with doing through with with doing those changes? So um, what, what we can do as a as, as a team is that we can talk you through the options that you have. Um, you know, we can provide you with the legal parameters. So if you come to us and say that these that these are the changes that I'm looking to make in, in my business, we can talk you through, okay, well, this is how you can approach that from a from a from a legal perspective, or or you can and can't do these. These particular things we can plan the process for you from an end-to-end -end, um, perspective ensuring that you've covered off all the bits that you need to and, and and as we've stated in there you know we can draft all required documentation all, all the communications um, we can actually then support with with meetings and, and the implementation of any of those changes rolling them out to the business and ensuring that that, that they are are fully cemented in um, and that's through sort of supporting as, as, little, as little or as much as you need really so we, we can be flexible to suit your needs as, as, as an individual and as a business um, but but really what we want to do is you know at, at the bottom there we want to be your trusted advisor we want to be your sounding board during this process and you know, we deal with this type of stuff every day, but we're, we're aware and hopefully for most businesses, you won't be going through too many big change periods uh, very regularly. So we want to be there just to make sure that any questions that you've got, we can answer them um, and, 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 and you feel sort of that you are uh, that, that you're fully supported during the process. So we've got one one final poll for you, um, similarly to the to, to the previous um, webinar that, that we did. Um, this one is 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 around if you're interested in in a free consultation to learn how we can provide some further to support for you from a, from an employee related perspective. So I'm just going to pop this one up. Give you a few minutes to fill it up. Great, just give a few more minutes. We've got a few extra people that have joined. Okay, that's great. I'm just going to give you two more seconds and end the poll. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, Brilliant. So really, that's the key sort of bits that we've got to, to sort of to run through. What we'd like to do now is just obviously offer you guys the opportunity to uh, to, to, to ask any questions um, that, that you may have. Um, I've had a couple of people that have sent some through before the, the session today. So thanks very much for, for, for those that, that have. Um, so the first question that, that came through to us was, um, how long will the consultation process take on redundancies if we are to make them? So thanks very much for that question. That's depending on the number of employees that are involved in the process, really. So if there are 20 or more, more employees in a 90 day period, then it will need to be a collective consultation over a minimum of 30 days. If there's less than that, then you can hold an individual consultation process. Um, and in terms of the length of time that's required, that needs to be a meaningful consultation, which we believe needs to be at least sort of 10 days to two weeks. There are times where it may be able to be a bit quicker than that. There are times where it needs to be a little bit longer than that, but it depends on the situation. Again, we can talk you through that if you have any questions around the length of time that's required or the type of consultation that's needed on any of your redundancies. Uh, the second question then being, will there be any changes to the redundancy legislation? Um, so sort of following on from that previous question. So yeah, in, in terms of, of changes to the, re the redundancy laws, um, these, these are more focused on um, the number of employees or when employees are made redundant across different establishments. So currently sort of it's per location rather than sort of a per business. Um, so this will change to be become 20 across the business in a 90 day period. So if you're looking at making redundancies, you know, on a larger scale across multiple locations, then, then that's really where the, the major changes from a redundancy perspective um, are coming in. Um, but, but apart from that, we don't expect too many other changes to redundancy legislation. Another question we've got is, will you make a charge for the consultation with the HR team? 
And the answer to that is no, we will give you all a free 30 minute consultation with us. Um, and we can then discuss potential options with you if you want to continue with, with some HR support from there moving onwards. Can we get a copy of the slides after the webinar? Yes, absolutely. A copy of the a recording will be sent out with the slides to everyone that has attended. We've had a question in here to, um, from Mark. So thanks very much, Mark. What, what kind of grace period will organisations have to put the new legislation into effect? So we believe the, the, the key date for us is the 25th of October. So that's when there's going to be some more announcements around sort of the, the, the legislation that, that's, going to be, uh, that, that's going to be put forward. Um, we believe then that it will, from, from, from that date, it will be more towards sort of uh, the, the beginning of, of, of sort of 2025 and, and usually from an employment law perspective it will be around April that we believe so there'll be plenty of time um, sort of bet between it we, we hope um, but, but as we get more information on that then we will let you know. Uh, the next question is I think missed the first few minutes what are the, the changes that we're discussing that we need to manage so um, th th there's a there's a whole sort of magnitude here we, we're not sort of focusing on on sort of any of the the, the, the specifics within here but what we'll do is that the, the slides will be uh, will be sent around to everybody afterwards so that you can you can pick up and sort of review any of those pieces um, at, at the end of the session. The question from Brian, so how does the reduction from two years to day one service affect fixed term contracts and will probationary periods become more meaningful or will they be weakened too? Um, we do believe that probationary periods will become more meaningful and there'll be tighter rules around, you know, timings and how to manage employees during that process. Um, and obviously, once we know more details on this, we will obviously, you know, pass this on, on to you. Um, but we do believe that the probationary periods will will need to be very closely managed for employees moving forward. You will still be able to 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 you know either extend a probationary period or terminate employment based on unsatisfactory completion of probationary periods. But again, you know the the real details on this hasn't been released as yet. Um, and then yet a further question here in terms of does the legislation affect consultancy contracts so um, that, that very much depends on the, the, the type of agreement that, that, that the business has with the consultant. Um, it may be that it's a business to business relationship and therefore that, that won't be affected by these, these legislation changes. But we talked about sort of the zero hour contract and the worker employee distinction. So it depends, uh, it depends a little bit on, on that in terms of, of, of how that, that, that consultancy agreement is, 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 uh, is structured. Again, if there's any questions on that, we're more than happy to look into the detail and support on that. That one. Um, I think so we've got a last question on here for the moment from um, Lawrence. When will we be expected to update existing employee work contracts? That will depend on, on what the changes are and what your current contracts look like. It may be that there are no changes necessary to your employment contract if you refer to certain policies in a handbook. And it may be then that the handbook needs updating. Um, but again, until we know the dates and exactly what it is they're going to change, we, we won't be able to advise on exactly what has to be updated in the employment contracts until then. That's great. And thanks. If there are any, any further questions that come through, we'll 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 look to to, to take them afterwards and we'll, we'll pop out an answer um, along with the uh, with, with the recording. Um, so, uh, as Wendy mentioned earlier, we will be sending a, a copy of the recording out to everybody after the session, so you you, you, re you should receive that over email. If, if at any point you have any questions or that you'd like to pick anything up, both myself and Wendy would be more than happy to support. So, please feel free to, to, to drop us an email or, or, to, uh, or, or to give us a call. Thanks very much for your time. Hello.